right uh, we we had a little visit to the East Lancashire uh, railway preserve railway we went it was closed but across the road was a museum um, with industrial museum warehousing and what have you and what we saw in it was a crane it's bolted to a platform and to the ceiling and it's just a simple frame really with a wheel on and such like and um, we took a couple of pictures of it and a couple of a picture of the headgear so we could have a look now uh, what I did was I actually saw this on another railway where it was outside and they built it against a wall and it was just bolted to a uh, like a flat steel plate so I can actually make one to fit on our own railway so what we're going to do is we're going to have a bash at making this out of Formex now I was lucky to get a piece of scrap of 10 mil Formex which is really handy you don't get this very often it costs a fortune if you buy it and um, so I, I, I sort of preserve these pieces look after them so but what I've done is I've drawn it out what I need in size that'll be maybe crane part and um, if I put one of my figures against it these are motley miniatures so you can see how big they are um, and we're working on looking at that drawing it's got to be around that size there's a there was a, a dummy stood there somebody uh, a figure so we could get an idea of the size of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this at this frame out and um, we'll make a wheel make the axle make a platform and uh, I'll carry on from there so that's where I'm going to start with that's my first part I shall cut that out and come back to you and show you that belt right so there we are I've cut a piece off cut the pieces out good test of your skills with the cutting formex um, get a test of our skills no mind anybody else's um, there we are so what I've done is cut that off Put them to one side. and that's our basic shape for the crane so I'm now going to round these edges because if I look at that they're quite round so what I'll do to round them is just literally get me scraber and just run down each edge all the way around so I'll do that and then I'll show you the next part and there we are that's our first part done so our next stage now now we've got this part done obviously we're gonna make this headgear in the bottom gear and um, that will well, just your plastic card and frame it off at the bottom the front just put a plastic card all the way around so it gives you a bit of de this depth and what have you and then we can make this part that little bracket with some bits in and a flower wheel but um, the other thing I need to do then is to how it would fasten it would be underneath it was on like a pivot as you can see into the actual floor and at the top it was actually fastened to a beam now the one I saw had like a bracket what went back from there a steel bracket to the wall so it had a wall at the back of it and it went straight to the back of a shed wall so what I'm going to do is build a little shed a wall a little platform uh, probably made for a window in it so it just gives it a bit of or a door in it just so it gives it the impression that it's a little building so I shall crack on and get that bit done and then you can we can see how it's going to work because obviously as you know I'm like I build these things and a clue how I'm, I'm going to build it I just go for it so we'll start off and start making some other little parts for it and catch you back up shortly right so what we've done we've been outside and had a look uh, where we can go next to the goods yard what we've just recreated we're going to build a platform that'll be the railway track obviously and then we've got on this platform we're going to build a building which will approximately three inches deep say it's a false one so it's like a fascia and we've got a platform four inches deep which will be the face of it right so when you look at it from the front what we're going to do We're going to build a platform edge like that then we're going to put a building on it like so 
and then we'll put doors in it oops if I can draw straight be all right but I'll probably get the door straight on the actual building and um, we'll put a couple of warehouse doors on it so they can open and slide open and then we'll put a bit of a roof on it at the back so that'll be tiles and then we'll mount the crane here so the crane will be there sort of thing with the wheels and such like and if you look from the side it'll look like that and then so that'd be your building that's your roofy bit and there we'll, mac we'll put a bracket on which will come out a flat plate and bolt to the top of the crane the crane will then go down and bolt into the platform and it will stick out like so so I shall start off a mech that's me drawing in full <laughs> and we'll work from there it is our work, Keith, Keith or best, one of my best friends who comes and wrecks, sees me do these things they just laugh because that's about as far as I go with plans and I don't think it's the easiest way to do it. It's just if you think, oh yeah, I can make that. This is where it got to fit. This is the bit I've got, and then we're going to go do it. So I'll so start off, and I'll make the platform bit, and I'll show you where I am with the actual building itself. Right. So we've now cut out uh, the main frame. What we did was, I don't know if you can see this. I'll bring this into focus. We made up a little part warehouse for our, uh, where we can we can find somewhere in the in the railway for this bit. So we thought we'd make a little warehouse up so we can demonstrate how it's going to work. Uh, so what we've got to do now is um, we've got to, we've made up the A-frame, this frame for the actual crane itself. Um, we've covered it, the ends in plastic card. I've got the same to do on there. But I'll do these bits separate because it'll show you how we, we add the little bits in. So that's the first part completed. The next part we decided to do was this wheel. This big wheel. Now, obviously, I can't do it as thin as that out of four uh, mechs. It would just, just literally break. I would have thought if it's that thin. Now, if you found something that suited that van, then fine. But what I did was I literally got my compass, put it the right way around, drew myself a circle, and then literally divided that into six, like so. This is standard tech drawing for when we were kids. You should all be able to do this bit. It's like when you're having a sparograph. So we'll literally mark that all the way around so we've got a point to work to. Then what I did was, was do a smaller circle in the middle for the hub. Like so. And then connected these up. So it's going from there to there. Through the centre. From there to that one. Through the centre. And the same with that one through the centre. I mean. Theirs didn't have six but this one's going to. And then what I did then was. I just added to these lines. On either side. So. I went under under and under now that's probably a sixteenth and then I did it the other way around so it was on the opposite side of the line so you've still kept that centre line in the centre and you've not gone sideways in anything and then do it again repeat it and the same with that one and that'll do me sparks so what I do then is I literally get myself a I better get a piece of board or else Pat will show at me Mainly to stop 
anything going in. So I set it up so it's just onto that one. And this is the com the actual dividers I've got and I just sharpened them so they're nice and sharp. And then literally, like I've said before, give it the natural way, don't pull it, turn it the wrong pull it inwards because it'll just pull the line in. Whereas if you just turn the turn it so it feels comfortable. And then go around again. So you've got a nice deep indentation all the way around. Then set it to the next one. But this time just go up to the spars. So you're going from that one to that one. So you could do that twice. Turn it a little bit. That one to that one. That one to that one. That one to there. Remember not to go over these lines because you don't need to, you need to keep them pieces in. And the final one is tighten it right back up again. I mean obviously you could use a smaller pair of dividers if you wanted to for this. Um, I've just stuck with these. I could really use the smaller ones but I think I can manage. So it's just a little bit on there. So you've just gone round then on all six. So you're just producing that little bit in the centre. And then literally we're going to follow the outside line down. The outside line down. And then you can Just cut to make sure you got them nice and thingy. I mean, obviously you could, you could if you can buy a wheel or um, make a wheel with 3D printing. I mean, a lot of us are now having a go at this. Me and Pat's having a go. We do some bits now with 3D printing. Uh, we try not to include it in this type of thing because not everybody's got a 3D printer, and it's it's not what we're about. We're trying to make it that everybody can have a go with simple tools connect that one up didn't go far enough send me that one That's it, that's all the spars cut in and then you can just deepen them if you feel it's necessary. Just get these bits tidied up. And then this is where your little bit of skill comes into it. Care blade which I do prefer and you've now got your lines to work to just gently pull it round don't go past anything and then cut down this side following your grooves same with that one Actually, I'm cutting right through into my piece of board underneath, but it's all right. Always come up backwards on yourself. Get your straight blade. I'll change that because I 
keep them nice and sharp. That one was a new one, this one isn't. And then just go back where you think it's caught at the ends, anywhere in there, in there, carefully into them corners and take it out. I presume you don't want to watch me do them all, that would be boring. So that's what I'm going to do, so I've, like Blue Peter, there's one I made earlier. So I literally did exactly the same thing, just cut them all out. Tidied it up a little bit. I've then made another ring, which I've now got to do it in for this one. And I made it just slightly bigger. So what it'll do is just literally give us the part for the rope to go inside. So what I'm going to do now is cut another one of those out. And then we've got the wheel more or less made. So I'll carry on and do this one. And then I'll come back to you. Right, so what I've done is just got I've done exactly the same again with my compass and my scriber. And now I'm just going to cut round this again. Again, it's nice and steady, inside one first. Don't don't force anything. Just go around carefully. If you just keep going gently around, And you can look on the back to see how far you're getting in. And you can see more or less there, we're more or less all the way around. So let's just go around again nice and careful. Feel where it didn't cut, which is that bit there. Little tiny back bit there, and that's the first one. Um, what I don't tend to do is I do tidy them up with just a little bit of emery paper. Again, it seems that it seems that you know you, you do this, but you do it before you cut the other one out because you've got something to hold. So there's the first part, so we've cut that one and now we just need the other part to come out. So again it's just following that, exactly the same procedure. Just let your knife follow the, the scored line you've put in. Nearly gone through. I feel it just just going through. Actually, to this end. I 
and that's that part out. And then what we're going to do then is, I made that just slightly bigger, so as you can see, it forms a pulley in there. So what I'll do now is glue these together, and we've then got our wheel, which goes on a bracket there. So we're going to make this up, tidy it all up. Um, I think we ought to maybe cut some bosses for the inside, I don't know. No, we'll leave it as it is. If you wanted to put an extra little piece in, you could do, you know what I mean, but I'm not going to bother. That'll do me as that is. So I'll put the glue this together, tidy it all up, and show you where we are from there. So there we are. I've put them back together. So I've glued the two ends so it's formed like a rebate just in there, just to make the actual wheel itself. Now, obviously, um, if you can think of something, a better way of doing it, um, it, that's your choice. This one, we're just trying to keep our costs down. It's just a tiny little project that somebody could like to have on their yard. And we're keeping it as simple as we can. So there's our next, that's our part done. Obviously, we'll, Pat will tidy that up with a file and keep it as neat and tidy as we can. We've now got to make a little bracket. Looking at that, there's like a, a bar goes, a uh, wheel goes through. Yeah, there's a, there's a frame what goes round it with a wheel and it's probably it's got a chain coming from there to the end so what we'll do is we'll we'll make this can you see that where that groove is it's not it's not a bad copy actually it's quite reasonable we'll make this part with a little bit of plastic tubing a couple of bits on the end and make that out plastic card to go around the framework so we'll carry on and cut them bits out. Right, so what we've done is we've now put the wheel together. So it's got a groove in the middle of it. And we screw, just glued a bit of plastic tube in to the end. Made two brackets. One we'd have to go all the way through. And we just press a little bot as it comes there. And the other one we've drilled a hole to match. And that's going to pop in there, like so. And then we're just going to glue that in where it is. I'm not going to make it working. At the end of the day, it's, it's it, you can't have everything working on. So that's that part up to there. So all we do need to do now is to make another little piece of plastic ad bracket just to close it off. And we're just going to glue a piece on the back of there. Just carefully glue it. I've cut this piece to size. I just pop that on there like so. And that goes like that. And that makes the complete bracket all the way around. I put it the way around, it's that way. That's better. So that's as though it was a, a bolt that had gone all the way around. Right, so now what we're on with now is, is this bracket at the top, this part there where the chain goes on. So what we've done is we've made a, a, bra a bracket with a hole in and a blank end there. We've made our wheel up so it's now complete. And what we're going to do is we've made that fit. So that'll go into there and that'll be glued into there like so. So that's our first part of that. So all I need to do now is just put a little bit of plastic card on the back of this part, which will be there like so. So we're just going to make that bit. We've also made these end bits, which go on there. So we're going to glue these on first. The same with that one. And we'll glue them on like so. I found a little pulley, what I can use. And I'll drill through in one go. I'll put some Formex in here, I think, just to thicken it out because it's only a thin pulley. Drill it through, and then I've got the pulley wheel in, in thing enclosed as well. So what I'll do now is go on and screw these bits on first, and then come back and show you how we're going to go on with the next bit. Right, so what we've done now, we've made these two brackets at the end, the bracket for there. 
this one we've just put a little bit of rivet detail in again just plastic card wrap round we did put a little bit of formex inside because it would have been too thin otherwise um, we found a little pulley i'd made for the one of the cranes i'd made earlier um, on the railway which is surplus so we're going to use that that will go in there so that's that part of the pulley so we've now made that we also did a little base another little piece of plastic tubing drilled a hole at the bottom pop that in there square base a little bit of ribbit detail cut another little round piece out and just popped it in there and that will go in there like so with this piece in you're now starting to see a crane of age from it so our next stage now is the two little pieces of uh, there's a piece of, of like anchor bars what just give it strength so this beam don't collapse so what I'll do is I'll cut a couple of pieces of brass wire pin them in either side glue them in and then we'll let Pat have a painter that and the tidy up and we can see where we are going with the other details right so here we are this is where we're up to at the moment Pat's give it a coat of paint so we can see exactly what we're trying to aim for this is the wheel we made that's the base she's painted these black and uh, black and made them look a bit more metallic that's the end piece we put on and um, we had a little we had a little pulley wheel that I'd found um, I'd made for something a long while ago so I've used that again again you could have made that out of Formex if you wanted just to cut a circle out and just filed it down in the middle so it made it a wheel the actual bar what goes through was just literally a piece of square Formex hole drilled right through the three and then just pushed in and um, it's not going to be working so but that's all that we've added the two bars on which are the strengtheners obviously to take the weight of it and that's and that's how it will look so this is how we're going to go into our our building so we'll pop it in so it will go in there like so obviously it rotates either way right so this is our next part we've got to build uh, it's this part here which is like a bracket what comes round and at the end there's a there's a cog and that's probably got a, like a little gear system on it if you was, I don't know if you'd wound from this side or what but obviously we haven't got this part now if you've got something that's a cog and we can find something we can use we will um, and we can no gear or plastic gear of some sort from somewhere um, we'll come across that bit when we get to it but first part is to build these 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 two brackets on there and there right and there we'll go on here so that bit goes back there with it, with it, it would probably have like an handle you'd wind so that's our next part and um, we found ourselves a little hook uh, which we can use um, I don't know if we'll have it hanging out because I don't want to be eating my wagons or anything else with it but we could have it on a parcel or whatever we're going to unload turn it that way around and have it unloading something but there we are that's where we're up to I hope you're enjoying this part and I think we're looking for well. yeah now the only other thing I'm contemplating is I'll turn it that way where this was made it was indoors so it was actually bracketed to a to a beam in a in a roof now i have seen one where they've been freestanding i've also seen one where they've been bracketed back to the wall with a with a bracket what's attached to the wall like a plate so i think we probably will do that we'll make a bracket to to fit it so it holds it in let oops holds it in position at the back so it doesn't so it makes it look that little bit stronger so i think our next job will be to get that bit in make a bracket and a plate with a pin through it so it keeps it in place right um we've just made the bracket which will bolt it to the to the actual wall itself and um, so i've made a little bracket piece of plastic tubing little end stop a um, little bit of rivet data so it's a steel plate pat will paint this black like the rest of it and then we discovered something that we hadn't even anticipated 
when we turn the crane on this side it won't turn that way because it's catching on the actual bracket so this is where experience of uh, we all shot, seem to suffer with at times is we needed to move it to the other side so what we've done if we've made this bracket that just pops in there we'll glue it to the wall but Pat will paint it first and of course it will swing this way which is probably what it would do but obviously it won't go past this bracket when it was on this side didn't work so we know it's what? it was the wheel alright oh, yeah it was the wheel what was catching so we've moved it across to here so we just a hole to fill in could be a little box on there so there we are, so we're now going to paint this part and then this can be glued in. We're not going to glue the pins in so we can get it out and fiddle about with it. But we should have this in place um, within the next half hour sort of thing. Right, so what we've done now is we've um, made the, the gear in at the bottom where you would wind the ropes up. Um, we've just made it a simple thing. Um, the What you call, I didn't have a cog. So I actually drew it in Formex, cut will settle out and just cut the teeth in. And then this one was an, an old, um, what you call it, one we had, Meccano one which was broken so I've used that just to re represent the other one. We've made the brackets, this is where the rope would go on and that fits onto here. I'll just pop that in place so you can see roughly where it goes. That goes on like so. So what we've got then is, this is a handle to stack, wind it on. There would be a chain or a rope fastened from this part down through there onto our hook. And that would be, then have a, a rope from this part up, round and fastened onto here. So when you wound this, it would turn that that turning would lift the rope and that's there so we're gonna Pat's gonna paint that now and that we've made the bracket I think I explained the bracket the other day which fastens it to the wall um, it we're quite pleased with it, it looks all right funnily enough we went to over the weekend we've been to the Midland Garden Railway show and on the modular railway somebody had actually built a crane very similar on the corner of a building so it was good to see that yeah it is it does look quite realistic and fits in with theirs as well right so we've now this is it completed so we've actually glued it into here and uh, we've made the cogs up and painted them Pat's painted it all now we've now roped it up like I said this rope goes on to here and it's bolted into this so when you wind this, this would turn and that would also turn the, where the other rope is which would go down to the actual hook. So that's it all fastened in. It will move but we're not going to, I mean it's like every model railway, we're not going to have it open across because it will go across my railway line. Uh, we've made up a couple of packing grates out of the scrap wood, what we've been using for a uh, scrap wood, scrap, scrap formex, just to make a couple of crates out of. Um, all it needs now is just spraying with varnish. And it can go outside and that is it finished and um, we're quite pleased with it we think it looks all right we've made a couple of little ropes just to hold everything on and there it is complete 